Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's the Max Canadian coming at you guys with a brand new video. And today, I'm going to be talking about Philip Zadina and how it got to this point. So, basically, Philip Zadina, if you guys didn't know, which you should, this is pretty much a Red Wings sports channel. But, anyways, Philip Zadina was the sixth overall first round draft pick in 2016, not 2016, 2018, by the Detroit Red Wings and was Ken Holland's final first draft pick as Red Wings GM. And boy, was it a whiff. So, first of all, I want to say I love Zadina. I feel he could have done incredible things if he really just got everything together. But unfortunately, he didn't and he couldn't. And now he's not even a Red Wing anymore. And there's a very good possibility that he's not even going to be in the NHL anymore. Um... So it's uh, it's unfortunate, realistically. It's pretty unfortunate. Just because, you know, Zena had such... He had such a really good potential. I, that came out clunky. He had such high potential, and it, he just couldn't put it together. And it sucks, because I'm... I keep thinking back when he was drafted, and everybody was ecstatic that he dropped to sixth. For the Red Wings, because he was consensus top four draft pick to go, but lo and behold, he dropped to sixth. Everyone was happy. Ken Holland picked him. Everyone was ecstatic. We got him. He was destined to be at minimum second line goal scorer, pretty much. That's what he was destined to be. And keep if I keep thinking back on it, I keep looking back on it and thinking, man, if he had it was able to get it all together. And was able to, you know, really get, just put everything together and reach his potential. How different this Red Wings team would look and how far along it would be. Because right now, Detroit's biggest issue is they can't score goals. Right now, our only real goal scorer, air quotes, is Larkin. And Larkin's more of a playmaker than a goal scorer. Yes, he can put up, he regularly puts up 30 plus goals. But you can't just rely on a 130-plus goal scorer to get him. You need at least, in today's NHL, two 30-goal scorers and a superstar to win and to, you know, go as far as winning a Stanley Cup. You know, we've we seen that this year with the playoffs. You know, you had Seattle beat Colorado because Colorado put all of their chips in on one or two good goal scorers and a great defenseman and that was it to you know same so did Edmondson Edmondson put their chips in on just McDavid and Dreisaitl and didn't do much after that uh I guess the best way the best team in the playoffs in the 22-23 playoffs that kind of mimics this whole notion of needing you know at least two to three 30 goal scorers plus one superstar is probably Dallas. You know, Dallas, I can't, I don't know their official stats, but they were probably the closest team to that. You know, I mean, Vegas as well, obviously, but Zadina could have been that other 30 goal scorer that we have. Because right now Detroit doesn't have another 30 goal scorer besides Larkin, or I should say guaranteed 30 goal, not guaranteed, but likely 30 goal scorer than Larkin. You know, Raymond has the potential to be a 30 plus goal scorer, um, and that's about it. Kubelik has that potential as well, you know, but other than that, we don't have anybody on the team that can consistently hit 30 goals besides Larkin. And Zadina was supposed to be that as well. Zadina was supposed to be another guy who could consistently put up 30 plus goal ga- uh, seasons. And basically be, uh, he was supposed to be our sniper, essentially. He was supposed to be our pure goal scorer, and that was it. You know, he would have been that for a very long time. But when he, unfortunately, when he gets to the front of the net, he just kind of shuts off. He doesn't know what to do, and he just shoots it at the goalie, essentially. You know, he does, he just forgets how to do everything. So, going through his, you know, history... You know, you had all the U16, U18, stuff like that. But then you get to 2017, 2018, his draft year. 
where he played for the Halifax Mooseheads Muse in the QMJHL. 57 games, 44 goals, 38 assists, 82 points. And this was what put Zadina so high on everybody's draft lists was th- was this season. You know, you don't look at somebody who scored 44 goals, 38 assists, and 82 points in 57 games and not think that they're going to be a potential star in the NHL. The problem with that, though, is that it's the QMJHL. You know, we've seen players time and time again go and dominate in these development leagues like the QMJHL, the OHL, but then they don't do much in the NHL or even the AHL because it's a completely different game. So he puts up those numbers, puts them really high in everybody's list. Then you get to 2018 to 2019, which was the year he was drafted. He plays nine games for the Red Wings with one goal, two assists, three points. Fair enough. You know, he it, it's not even a rookie year, technically. He only played the nine games, and then he got sent back down to the AHL so that way he didn't burn a year of his ELC. And he put up respectable numbers in the AHL, 16 goals, 19 assists, 35 points, over half point per game. So it seemed like he potentially, he's, that potential still there. Now, 28 to 2019 was, you know, pretty much the decline of the Griffins. They didn't really do much since, they haven't done much since then. So, it's understandable. Then you get to 2019, 2020, where he comes up, plays 28 games, for, and gets 8 goals, 7 assists, 15 points in 2019, 2020 season with the Red Wings. And again, I mean, first go in the NHL as an official rookie and puts up decent numbers. It's also, you know, over half point per game. And then in the AHL, does the same thing, over half point per game. So he's starting to, it looks like he's starting to get things going. He's starting to find his groove in North American hockey. And then he becomes a full-fledged member of the Red Wings in the 2021-2022 season. Or, my bad, the 2020-2021 season, he becomes a full-fledged member. Obviously, shortened season, he only played 49 games. But in those 49 games, he got 6 points, 13 assists. Well, 6 goals, 13 assists, 19 points. Not good at all. That is less than half a point per game. I think that's, like, roughly a quarter point per game. So, not very good numbers. But at the same time, like I said, it was a 2021-2020 season. It was shortened, uh, or 2019-2020 season was a shortened season. 2020-2021 season was in the bubble. Still a shortened season, obviously. And then you go to 2021-2022, his first full season, air quotes, because he didn't play all game, every game as a Red Wing. 74 games, 10 goals, 14 assists, 24 points. Also very bad, not even close to a point, half point per game. And it's the wheels are starting to fall off. This is where a lot of people started calling Zadina a bust. This is the moment where things took a turn, and everybody was starting to yell, "Zadina's a bust! Trade him! Don't resign him!" But Eisenman resigned him, and for he resigned him to a three-year deal worth, I think, like I think it was he's made he made like what one point two million or something like that a year, something like that, or it was like two point two million. So, he gets signed a decent contract. Eisenman liked what he's seen. He was working. He's seen he was working on his game, and then he breaks his leg. He gets injured, and only plays thirty games this season. In the last season, for three goals, four assists, and seven points with the Red Wings, and I believe he was sent to the AHL at some point. Um, I'm not sure why it says. True, I don't remember him actually playing in the AHL. I'm assuming this is just something because, you know, he was put on unconditional waivers. Nobody picked him up. So technically he's part of Grand Rapids, stuff like that. So I think that's what this is all about. But I could be wrong. I, I'm i not sure. But regardless, he gets sent down to the AHL with through waivers in the offseason, obviously. And then he says he will not report to Grand Rapids if he doesn't make the team. So, to recap, he requested a trade. We uh, Reports were, like, weeks ago, like, not too, uh, not too long after Stanley Cup Finals. He Well, first, he gets signed a 
three-year deal in the with the Red Wings for you know two point something million dollars a year. Season ends, Stanley Cup is won, and then he requests a trade, which already big balls. You know, a, I guess props for having big brass ones on you, Zadina, because you requested a trade from a guy who believed in you enough to give you a three-year deal. But, you know, like he has to, Iserman obliged, looked for a trade, couldn't find one. So then he gets put on waivers. He essentially, it was essentially, you know, Iserman essentially said, we looked for a trade, nobody wanted to trade with trade for you. So we put you on waivers, basically giving you away to anybody who wants you. Nobody wanted you. So now, he, it's, you know, and Iserman basically said, and pretty much everybody's thoughts is, he didn't. Cl- he cleared waivers. He's in the AHL now. He's got to compete and actually compete for a spot to break through onto that roster. And trust me, it's not going to be easy this year. You've got a lot of people that'll be jarring for positions on that team, and it's very limited positions. We have a lot of forwards and people on the team that were signed to the team this free agency that will likely be on the opening night roster. You know, like Comfer. Um, cost and guys like that, they'll likely be on the team. And not to mention, you still got Fabry in the background. So it's if he made the raw, if he played and made the roster, it would basically say, all right, that the potential still there. He's only twenty three years old. He's still got that potential, but he has to prove it. And breaking through on this Detroit Red Wings roster, which is pretty deep now, will prove that. Like I said, that potential is still there, and he can still do something. But then he goes on to say, essentially, like through his agent or something like that, that if he didn't make the team, he would not be reporting to Grand Rapids, which would be a contract violation, and he would end up getting his contract terminated anyways. So they, so he decided to put all of his chips in and basically make a $5 million bet, because that's pretty much what the rest of his contract is worth, and have his contract terminated with Probably, probably with the hopes that another team will pick him up for something. You know, it would likely be a league minimum deal for a year, probably, and he would go to that team and prove that he's worth more and potentially get him, a, you know, like a four million dollar deal or something. So it's, it. I mean, in respect for put it, putting for betting on yourself, but the problem is if nobody wanted you for. You know, if nobody wanted to trade for you, that makes, you know, makes sense. He hasn't really proven that, you know, another team should want him. So then he gets put on a waiver. Like, he hasn't proven that another team could, should want him and give something up for him. So, you know, fine, gets put on waivers. Red Wings basically saying, here, we'll give you him for free. Still nobody claimed him. So that, to me, says nobody wanted him at his cap hit either, which isn't a lot. Like I said, it's one it's like 2.2 million or something like that so he nobody wanted him for that cap hit either which to me speaks that either a he a lot of teams don't think he's even worth his current cap hit and he may get signed to a league minimum deal or b he's just not going to get signed at all it's pretty much get signed or do nothing in which case, I would probably have preferred to stay in the AHL. He would still be making good money in the AHL, and he could work on his game and keep trying to crack that roster. And if he doesn't crack that roster in the two years that he's got left, well, then yeah, go somewhere else. It does. It didn't. It, plus, he'd be going to a Grand Rapids team that's looking to be really good this upcoming season. You know, because you're going to have guys like likely like Mazer. Um, and, uh, I don't want to say Edmondson. He should make the roster this year. But Johansson, Wallander, uh, Lombardi, you know, you've got these guys on Grand Rapids that'll make the team really good. So what harm could Philip Zadina do in the AHL? It's pretty much as close to the NHL as you're going to get without playing at NHL pace. So it's, it's confusing. He, it's weird because Zadina never gave me the impression that he was like that. You know, he did kind of come off like a dick, like he was too good to play in the AHL, saying that he will not report to the AHL. He clearly has no intentions of playing in the AHL, which, I mean, fair enough for somebody who's been on 
who's been playing in the NHL for two years, two, three full years now. Well, three air quotes full years. He only played 30 games this season. But it's it, it is a bit cocky. You know, and he I mean he was a bit cocky when he came out and said after his draft that, you know, he, he's going to fill the teams who passed on him's nets with pucks, but he never did that. So it's it's interesting, but this does end the Zadina saga, and he has basically become the bookmark and the ending for the Holland draft era. Because the only other two players that are still the only other two first round players, I should say. The only other two first round draft picks in the Detroit Red Wings lineup right now is Rasmussen and Joe Valeno. And that's it. I don't even think Joe Valeno is signed to a contract yet. I think he's still an RFA. So, you know, it's, it, it's wild because Zadina had so much potential. And everybody's seen that potential. And was excited when he dropped to sixth, but it just didn't work out. And maybe that's just a Detroit thing, you know? He was never really on a good Detroit team. When he came in, you know, guys like Zetterberg were, you know, Zetterberg was gone, Datsuk was gone, Cronwall was gone. Well, no, Cronwall was still there in his rookie year. But, you know, most of the guys who made Detroit good were gone. You know, after that, he was left with he wasn't left with many chances to prove himself so it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens but like i said it's the end of the zadina era in detroit so let me know what you guys think in the comments below do you think zadina was somebody who had fantastic potential but just couldn't or wouldn't put it all together in the nhl or do you think that he dropped down on that draft board for a reason and Holland should have never taken him in the first place? You know, hindsight's twenty twenty, so yes, Holland, looking back at it, Holland it wasn't probably wasn't the best choice for Holland to take him. But at that time, Zadina was considered the best player available, so Holland went for him. And you can't really blame him for that. So, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is, as always, the Mexican Canadian. And I will talk to you guys later. Adios.